Hello siblings, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming essentially a part three to my leaving the Mormon church video. And this is coming out so late, so let me explain a little bit. So I filmed like four different versions of this video and then I was like, you know what? It's not even that important. Like everyone knows why I left and there's nothing else really to say. I have nothing more to share of my story, even though I kind of do. And then I realized like every week I'm still getting so many DMs from people asking for advice on how to move forward with their life and what to do when they're questioning and how to just navigate life after leaving the Mormon church because it's a whole different lifestyle to leave. And and what it really is like and what you go through. So I thought today I would sit down and finally talk about it. So this is gonna be me talking about my life after leaving the Mormon faith and what I believe in now, how my life has changed and kind of just answering some of your guys' questions. So first I'll just explain my story. So as you guys know, I left about a year ago. I think a lot of people think that as soon as you leave, you're just instantly this like super happy person and you're so glad to be done with that section of your life. But that's not exactly how it goes for everyone. And here's the thing, everyone's stories are gonna be completely different. You're gonna feel different ways. And so you shouldn't feel bad at all if you are feeling like guilty or like, oh, maybe it is true. Maybe I need to go back. Cause you have to think about, I mean, depending on how long you were in the church this is your entire life this is everything you've known so of course you're gonna question it you can make the best decision for yourself and still question if it was the right decision this goes for literally anything in life so after I found out that nothing was true I would go back and forth like you know what maybe it is true even though all of these things don't make sense even though nothing adds up even though I don't agree with literally the things the prophets and apostles are saying but if you don't agree with that then why are you in the church they are the apostles and prophets you're supposed to listen to them they speak for God. Even though I didn't agree, I was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. I kept making excuses. So I kept thinking, you know what, it's fine, I'll just go back or I'll just go every once in a while. And it takes time, it takes time to kind of get over that and make the decision like, no, I'm going to move on with my life because I know that it's not true. There's no point in torturing yourself and feeling all those feelings that you felt like anxiety or just knowing that something didn't add up or just knowing that you are in a controlling religion when you don't have to be. So yes, it's okay to second guess yourself. I definitely did that a lot. And I really didn't even tell people that I decided to leave until I was for sure in my decision. Like people knew I didn't go or I was inactive, but I didn't tell people I was out until I knew that I was out. And the other thing is that you don't have to tell anyone anything. You can avoid the question. You don't have to make a big statement or post a big thing or sit your parents down or whatever the situation is. You don't really have to do that. You can just stop going and not make a big deal out of it. The only reason that I feel the need to share my story is because I know that I can help so many people out there who are in my position and feel 100% alone. So there's that when you're first leave. So now being out for like a really long time and not feeling any remorse anymore and no guilt, I know that it's not true. The last thing I ever want to do would be go to a Mormon church. It just is nothing that I'm interested in at all. I am, my beliefs now do not even align with the basic doctrine of what Mormons teach. So I've moved on. And I also went through a stage where I was pretty angry and I just wanted to like expose everything. I think it's normal to kind of go through that phase too because it's like, you're telling me that I don't have to do that and I'm watching all these people like suffer and not even like, like I literally will hear people I know who are in the church who say, I hate the church, but I know it's true. Or like, I hate this, 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 and this. Oh, but I, I know it's true, I have to go. Because you don't realize that it actually doesn't have to be true and you don't actually have to go. If you don't like it, then see what else is out there, you know? But it's hard to think that way when you're actually in the church. So I think a big thing for me was when I finally posted my part one and part two of why I left, that was like, it was as much for me as it was for other people because I finally felt like I let everyone know and I was letting go of it and everyone knows now. I'm not holding back because I don't really see a reason in holding back my reasons because I tell you guys like everything about my life, why wouldn't I tell you about this, you know? So that was really helpful for me, having somewhere to vent. Um, there's actually a lot of like Facebook groups if you are needing some comfort or whatever, there's tons of them of like ex-Mormon groups. I know there's like a millennial Gen Z ex-Mormon group or there's like, uh, I don't know, there's like a bunch of them. So that could be another option if you're looking for community. My DMs are also always open if you need someone to talk to. So let's talk 
talk a little bit about like literally I'm not involved in the church whatsoever I'm gonna kind of share some experiences that have happened to me since leaving and we'll go from there So whenever I lived in Utah, I'm originally from Missouri But I lived in Utah for a little bit and when I lived there I would get like calls and texts and stuff from my like church leaders like I was on the email list But no one ever actually came to my house or bothered me And then the funniest thing is whenever I was leaving and I said I was moving and I asked them to move my records which I have a whole reason about why I even moved my records, but I asked them to move them and they were like, oh, we're so sad to see you go, we'll miss you. And I'm like, you never met me. No, I never met a single person in my ward. I never went to church. What do you mean you miss me? Like, it's just so weird. Anyway, so this, oh, whew. So I hadn't heard anything from basically, other than getting like the weekly emails or whatever, I hadn't heard anything from anyone from church. And then my new bishop calls me, I don't answer, he leaves a voicemail, and this voicemail is just talking about like, hey, welcome to the ward, we'd love to meet you, and literally he said in it that he had called my ex, but someone else had answered the phone, and he didn't know who it was, blah blah blah, whatever. So let's just first note that the first thing the bishop did was call my ex, because of course you have to talk to the man, not the woman, and I guess someone else answered, whatever, and then he left a voicemail on my phone. His next course of action was to call my father. I am a 20 year old woman who lives on my own. I have since I was 17. I have my own individual. I have my own life. I don't even live in the same state. And he finds on my records my dad's number and calls him. I was just like, hey, Cindy moved into our ward. How can we help her? Yada, yada, yada. I was like, what in the world? So my brother told me that, and then my dad had told me that my bishop called me, and I was just like, okay, that's really weird. Other than that, things have been great. Like, I think after a while of just not going and not really talking to people about the church, like my life used to revolve around the church, especially when I lived in my hometown, because all my family's in the church, and my dad loves to talk about the church and all of that. Like I felt like my life literally revolves around the church and there was no way to ever not be talking about it or thinking about it or it getting brought up because so-and-so isn't wearing their garments or so-and-so did this or oh, Cindy didn't come to church, this, that, and the other, whatever. But now, I, it's like I hear something about the Mormon church, I'm like, oh, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Or like I'll be on the phone with a family member or texting them and they say something about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. Like it honestly, like it's just the last thing on my mind. It's just crazy. So it does get better and yeah. So now on to like questions that I've been getting. Um, I think the main question is a lot of people are asking, how has leaving the church affected my relationship with my family? Because as you guys know, I have a huge family, all of them, like probably 99% of my family members on my dad's side live in Missouri and we are a generational Mormon family. So obviously me not going to church, not only not going but being outspoken against it and talking about my bad experiences with it is going to cause a little bit of turmoil. But I am proud to say that surprisingly there is a, it's not as bad as I thought and there's still so much love. Like obviously everyone still loves me and I've gotten some nice messages. But on the flip hand I've had a lot of experiences where people choose the church over family members and that's just just like how it is. Anyone who's in the church, we choose them over someone who is our own family because of the church family and they're Mormon so we like them more. And it's a subconscious thing and I really can't blame people because I mean this is what they've been pushed in their brains since whenever they joined the church so how can I really be upset about it and I think that's something I've had to learn is just forgiveness like as soon as someone says something offensive to me because I'm not going to church anymore or because of my life decisions I just can't I take it with a grain of salt they will never understand or maybe they will one day but they don't right now and you cannot blame your family for the way that they treat you you can only you can't change the way they're gonna act or react but you can change how you act or react what you say I think that whenever people treat people a certain way, it shows more about their character than it does about yours. And I stand by that. And I definitely have gotten closer to my family members who either aren't as active or just don't go anymore. Because, I mean, that's just bound to happen. It's like you have to find your community somewhere. We as people feel the need to always have community and to fit in somewhere. So, of course, that's going to happen. Um, I know a lot of people, I get so many messages about people who are so scared to tell their parents, family, because of how they've been, they might be treated or they have told them and they've been completely 
like shut off and shut out and their people their family don't want anything to do with them luckily I have not experienced that but if that does happen to you I just want to say that I'm so sorry I know not everyone's parents are like this but I have gotten some DMs of you guys like that and just know that I'm here for you there are plenty of people who are here for you and just remember that this is not your parents life it is not your family's life it is your life and you have to make the decision that is going to be best for you you can't just keep pretending to be someone else to make everyone else around you happy just because it's what your parents fully believe in or your family doesn't mean it's true. I think one of my favorite things since leaving is being able to figure out who I am without anyone telling me who I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing. Because whenever I was in the church, it was like, this is your path. Like, as a woman, this is what you do. Or as a 18-year-old, when I was in the church, this is what you do. As a 19-year-old, this is what you do. As a 20-year-old, this is what you do. You know, you need your life should revolve around the church and all this. And, oh, well, maybe you should go on a mission. Maybe you should get married. Maybe you should have kids. Like, basically everyone telling you exactly what you need to do next or you meet with your bishop and they tell you what they think you should do next. And now, not having that, I get to do what I think I should do next, what I think is best for me. And now as a Christian and letting God guide my life, I just do what God wants me to do. Not what some prophet or apostle says I should do, but what me with my one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. That's what's important to me. And I think something that's really hard for people who do leave the Mormon church is to even believe in God at all. And I know that it's so scary. And personally, it was something that was super scary and hard for me to move on to and hard to let go. You don't just go like, oh, this is my relationship with God outside of the church now. It's like you have to relearn who God is because Mormon theology is really, really, really different than basically any other religion. It's its own religion, which is crazy that they claim to be Christian because they don't even align with Christian theology, like basics. So it is hard and it does take time, but just remember, that your relationship with God is personal, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and it is most important. Looking in a lot of the Facebook groups I'm in about General Conference coming up, I've seen so many people that have been like, all the advice that you get about listening to General Conference is never about your relationship with God or mentioning Jesus. It's like, make sure that no matter what the prophet says, you just listen. Or a personal revelation doesn't matter. Listen to the prophet because they're talking to God. Like undermining your personal relationship and putting the prophet and his relationship with God over yours, it's just, it's sad. <laughs> it just is. So another thing is how do I go about like disagreeing with a lot of people close to me? Like me and my dad do not agree on most theology things. I don't agree with like a lot of the stuff the church does and my dad loves the church. So it's definitely difficult, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, if you have to avoid the conversations, avoid the conversations. If you have to set boundaries, then set boundaries. You know, if you just have to sit there and go, okay, mm -hmm, yeah, then just do it. Like you don't need to burn bridges to leave this church. And I think that's a misconception. You don't have to cut people out because you don't agree with them anymore. You never know when they might have questions and when they want to feel like they can come to you, you know? And that has happened to me since I've left. I've had people come to me and be like, you know, can you not tell anyone but I'm, I'm confused and I'm lost or whatever. And now I'm an example of someone who can leave and still be happy and still have a relationship with God. So yeah, basically it's normal to feel lost and confused. It's normal if you don't feel this like freedom and happiness right away. All of those things are normal because they are all signs of going through grief. And I mean, when you are letting go of everything you used to believe in, you have to grieve and you have to do that in your own coping mechanisms, whatever you need to do. Um, and then I just wanna wrap up about talking about my faith as a Christian and going from being a Mormon to a Christian because it is so different. And a lot of people are like, how can you do that? Or how did you do it? How do you strengthen your relationship with God? All that. It's hard. It definitely was to unlearn and relearn but what I've been personally doing, oh, my fan finally turned off. Or the best thing you could do is just talk to God. Talk to him, read the Bible, study it, and talk to God. Get to know who he is. That's the best thing you could do. It is possible Jesus does not only exist in the Mormon church, and they have very different views than what the Bible teaches, <laughs> what most Christians believe, what I believe. And if anyone has questions about that, you're also welcome to DM me on Instagram.
But yeah, my personal life after leaving the church is so free, so happy. I've never felt closer to God. I've never felt more myself, more free, more happy, like all of these things. And don't get me wrong, life is still hard. I'm not saying that I'm 100% A-OK -okay all the time, super happy. That's not how life is, but it's definitely better than when I felt trapped and like I was drowning being in that church. I no longer am controlled by whoever. <laughs> you know, like I don't have a bishop tell me what to do or a prophet or any leaders or whatever. Like I just do me. I do my thing. It doesn't matter. It's not other people's business what I'm doing. I don't have to go tell my bishop what I'm doing all the time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Got something from this uh, related to it maybe. Leave your stories down below. I actually have decided that I want to start doing a like I read people's leaving the church stories because so many people have such unique stories or relatable stories that I think people need to hear. So I'd love to do like a fourth episode of this where I read other people's stories so you know that you really aren't alone. It's not just me and just you. There are thousands of people. So I'm going to leave a link where you can leave something anonymously. You can type a whole paragraph and I'll be reading through them. If you want your name to be in it, you're welcome to add your Instagram at or whatever. If you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. So make sure to leave those down below. And I'm honestly so happy to keep doing these with you guys. I could even do a live where we talk back and forth and I really go into depth about things because I want people to be educated and be able to make a choice for themselves and not feel pressured any one way or another because this is such a personal thing and such a personal decision. And I know that watching these videos when I was questioning was the most helpful thing. So let me know if you guys would like that or ask me questions of whatever you wanna know. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.